now we are going to discuss about the next topic in our model that is multi core processor normally we have heard about a computer with multiple core now we have heard about the dual core dual core computers or quad core computers or octa core processor just like things we have already heard now that is the next thing which we are going to discuss so by the definition which you can see that the multi core computer also known as chip multi processors which has combination of two or more processors on a single piece of ice so that basically says that on a single silicon material or on the same single integrated circuit we are having multiple cores or processors whenever we say about the multiple cores what that core consist of that core consist of components of independent processor now independent processor normally has the register cpu so what are the components it has is registers alus pipeline hardware and control unit plus l1 instruction and data cables so whenever there are more than two cores of the processor are fabricated on a single chip we call that kind of processor as a multi core processor uh, further there is one more thing which is nothing but listed over here that nowadays there are some newer ways or newer organization in which more number of more number of caches are also implemented on the on a single chip because of which the size of memory on the chip is more as compared to the actual processing unit so as it is being listed that l1 and instruction data l1 instruction data instruction and data caches are available apart from that l2 and l3 cache can be also incorporated on the multi core processors so further before going into the discuss what is actually or how we can differentiate the existing processor with the multi core processor that will discuss so the chip organization we can see over the thing but there are three chip organizations are super scalar simultaneous multi threading and multi core processors so in the super scalar architecture which we have seen in the previous uh, lectures that says that there is a issue logic is different issue logic means how the instructions are issued to the processing unit so as we can see in the diagram that there is a through, uh, through the use of instruction l1 instruction cache and l1 data cache parallelly we can send more number of uh, programs and uh, at the same time the data to the issue logic and through that it can be forwarded to the processing unit that is what happened in the super scalar architecture now in the super scalar architecture the one more thing which is nothing but listed is the thing but for the different operations just like a integer operations or floating point operation there are multiple number of uh, what you call this multiple number of pipelining are available if you go for the simultaneous multi threading now in the simultaneous multi threading what is being said that now this operation which we have discussed about the pipelining that are being uh, which is being processed by the processing unit goes the multiple number of pcs so as it is being shown over here just a minute it is being shown over here pc1 to pcn these are where these are the ways in which the page fetch instruction goes for the execution so just like that the registers 1 to n can be used for providing the data which is being required for execution and after the use of the different number of uh, different number of pcs we can forward it that to the processing elements here also in the case of simultaneous multi threading this is concept about the how the process each process of any computer or any instruction is further divided into smaller parts and that smaller part are being independently executed now the further in the multi core processor this is a very uh, which is our topic of discussion in that multi core processor each processing element starting from processor 1 2 3 up to n they are having their dedicated l1 i and l1 d l1 i stands for l1 instruction cache and l1 d stands for l1 data cache so they have dedicated l1 cache available for a single processor that is this processor one has the dedicated l1 cache similar to that processor two also have the l1 cache processor 3 also has the l1 cache and whenever we are discussing about this processor as it is being listed that internally it can be uh, of the architecture of super scalar or smt it can be of super scalar architecture or smt architectures 
so this is a multi core processor so whenever we say about the multi core computers the multi core computers are having different number of cores which are parallelly working whenever the same kind of instruction can be executed or uh, we can we wanted a parallel operations to be executed further going into the detail of multi core organization the multi core organization depending upon the implementation also can be have the different forms so these are the different forms or different organizations in the multi core uh, processes are available so the first diagram shows that dedicated l1 cache so dedicated l1 cache which we have discussed in the previous diagram itself each cpu core is available with their l1 data cache and l1 instruction cache and l2 cache is shared among all the different cores so core 1 to core n are taking the data or getting the data from l1 l2 cache which is available from which is getting the data from in memory so l1 l2 cache sorry l2 cache is shared or l2 cache is responsible for providing the data to the different number of cores going to the second day of multi core organization in which the l2 cache is also available to single core so further there are hierarchies are added to the single core so that l2 cache so more space can be accommodated to the single core so the traffic of accepting the or accessing the data from l2 cache can be avoided by using this kind of architecture where cpu core one can take the data from dedicated l2 cache which is available for core one itself similar to that the another core is also having its own l1 cache as well as l2 cache this is called as a dedicated l2 cache organization the third one is a shared l2 cache now the difference between this dedicated l1 cache and shared l2 cache is that in both the organization we can see that l2 cache is a shared between the different cores but the important thing to be noted over here is l2 cache is available on chip because this box basically shows that what is available on chip so with a comparison of this first and the third or dedicated l1 cache and shared l2 cache we can see that l2 cache is available on chip because of that the traffic can be more but the uh, buses which are internal buses which are connected from or uh, the different cores of l1 cache can be directly fetch the data from l2 cache so this is the one of the organization where shared l2 cache can be used but it is available on chip the one more important thing to be noted over here is since the improvements of different multi core organizations it is being observed that nowadays about more than 50% of the size of this chip if you see this is the size of the ic more than 50% of the size or more than 50% of the space is being taken by the memory and less than 50% in uh, less than 50% space is being taken by the different number of cores or actual processing elements so this is a point to be noted because uh, because uh, the processing elements are having faster and faster but at the same time the data has to be provided at the faster rates and for providing the data at the faster rate we should have the sram to be used and that sram also should be connected with the faster connection between the cores and the uh, actual memory so main memory is actually where from where the we are getting the data but that is being provided to the l2 cache through the use of l2 cache it is being provided to the different cores and last way of organization is nothing but one more thing which is added is nothing but l1 cache l2 cache and now l3 cache is shared so this l3 cache is shared among the different number of cores and the all the cpu cores which are having its own l2 cache that are getting the data from this l3 cache so this is the last organization or multi core organization which which can be discussed so we can see that here if i see that as i have discussed in the uh, discussion of the shared l2 cache that more than more than 50% of the space is being taken by the memory so you can see that there are how many components of the memory that are available l1 cache l2 cache and l3 cache and now l1 and l2 cache is dedicatedly available for all the cores so if i have the four cores this um, number of devices will be 4 multiplied by 3 that is a 12 devices will be then spaces will be required for only memory and apart from that added to that is l3 shared l3 cache so 
with a uh, respect of 44 organization we can uh, discuss about or we can have these organization to be discussed thank you